Nisha Rate, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, KTHM College. I am going to deal with three credits from the subject Developmental Botany, BOUT 232. In previous lecture, we discussed about concept of plan development, what is plan development, characteristics of plan development. Now, today we are going to discuss what is potency, commitment and specification. These are the processes of the plan development. First, we are going to discuss what is potency. The potency means power or energy. In plant development, the cell having the power to differentiate and to generate the plant part or whole plant. That is the potency. Formation of a plant part or whole plant. It is the potency of the cell cell having the potency to generate whole plant or plant part that is the meristematic cells or um, means the cluster of cells or group of cells they can differentiate through formation of a plant part or tissue or organ or whole plant throughout their life cycle now Cell potency is a cell's ability to differentiate into other cell types. The more cell types a cell can differentiate into, the greater is the potency. The cell with the greatest potency can generate more cell types than those with lower potency. That means the cell having lower potency, they can generate less cell types or cell having the greatest potency they can generate more cell types the developmental potential or potency of a cell describe the range of different cell types it can become the zygote and its very early descendants are totipotent zygote is the example of a totipotent cell these cells have the potential to develop into a complete organism Totipotency is the common in plant, but it is uncommon in animals after the 2-4 cell stages. As development proceeds, the developmental potential of individual cells decreases until their fate is determined. Now, the potency is also described as gene activation potential within the cell begins with the totipotency to designate a cell with the most differentiation potential pluripotency multipotency oligopotency and finally unipotency we can see one by one in uh, hierarchy of a totipotency the totipotency or totipotent stem cells can give rise to any of the 220 cell types found in an embryo as well as extra embryonic cells. Totipotency is the ability of a single cell to divide and produce all of the differentiated cells in an organism. The spore and zygotes are the examples of the totipotent cells. This is the diagram of hierarchy of the totipotency. It can differentiate into the pluripotent cell, multipotent cell, oligopotent cell and unipotent cell. Pluripotent cell, that is the pluripotent stem cells can give rise to all cell types of the body but not the placenta. As compared to totipotent, pluripotent cells can only differentiate into a embryonic cells. Totipotent cell differentiate embryonic cells as well as the extra embryonic cells then multipotent cell multipotent stem cells can develop into a limited number of a cell types in a particular lineage they form the particular part or organ then oligopotency it is the ability of progenitor cells to differentiate into a few cell types 
they can differentiate only a few cell types then unipotency unipotency uni means one unipotent stem cells refers to a cell that can differentiate along only one lineage this is the branches of the totipotency now totipotent embryonic stem cells differentiate into a pluripotent embryonic stem cells it can divided into endoderm line mesoderm line ectoderm line pluripotent stem cells that is formation of a endoderm mesoderm ectoderm for example in mango outer line is ectoderm middle line is a mesoderm and inner line is a endoderm in pluripotent embryonic stem cells differentiated into a multipotent stem cells multipotent stem cells means the stem cells can develop into a limited number of a cell types in a particular lineage they can form only particular part of the plant okay this is about the potency now commitment the process of a plant development what about commitment the commitment the differentiation is the process by which a cell acquires a metabolic structural and functional properties that are distinct from those of its progenitor cells this ability to differentiate demonstrate that the differentiated plant cell retain the genetic information required for the development of complete plant a property term as totipotency you know that the from the meristematic cell they can differentiate and from plant organ or plant part or cells can divide the divide to form the whole plant or plant part it is known as the totipotency but these over changes in cellular biochemistry and function are preceded by a process resulting in the commitment of the cell to a certain fate that is cell committed to develop plant organ like leaf or stem or root or the cluster of cell develop whole plant this is the commitment of the cell to a certain fate now these are the stages of commitment first that is the genomic constancy and nuclear totipotency genomic constancy means the same gene they cannot change the genes involved in the formation of the plant organ or plant part then gene action and regulation that is some transcription factors regulate the gene expression or regulation then third stage cell surface and extracellular environment that means the cell having the particular cell differentiate the particular area they can acquire that is the cell surface then next is the stability of determination and differentiation that is cell or tissue said to be differentiate or determine that is they can differentiate autonomously you can see in next lecture what is determination and differentiation then embryo to adult grow and form that is juvenility juvenility that is the juvenile phase that is the vegetative phase transition to adult reproductive phase many plants do not flower that means they cannot produce the reproductive structure up to that stage they are said to be juvenile plant from this juvenile stage 
और वेजिटेटिव स्टेज ट्रांजिशन टू द अडल्ट रिप्रोडक्टिव स्टेज इस प्रोसेस इज नोन एज द जुएनलिटी देन द कंसिक्वेंस ऑफ डिफ्रेंशिएशन और मॉडल सिस्टम दैट इज रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस कमिटमेंट और मॉडल सिस्टम दे कैन फिक्स द सेल प्रोसेस और सेल सेल प्रोसेस फ्रॉम अ सर्टन फेट दे कैन कमिटमेंट नो चेंज इन दिस मॉडल सिस्टम ओके देन द प्रोसेसेस ऑफ कमिटमेंट कैन बी डिवाइडेड इनटू टू स्टेजेस दैट इज द फर्स्ट स्टेज इज लिएबल फेज कॉल्ड एज द स्पेसिफिकेशन एंड द सेकंड स्टेज ऑफ कमिटमेंट इज डिटर्मिनेशन now the next process is specification the fate of cell or tissue is said to be specified when it is capable of differentiating autonomously for example differentiation means the cell derived from root apical and shoot apical meristems and cambium differentiates and mature they perform the specific function this act leading to maturation is termed as a differentiation the fate of a cell or tissue is said to be specified that is it is capable of differentiating autonomously it is called as the specification by itself when a place into a petri dish or test to that is into an artificial environment or in vitro condition that is neutral with respect to the developmental pathway at that time the stage of specification cell commitment is still capable of a being reverse this process commitment you know that the commitment is the irreversible process but the cell in vitro condition in petri plate or in test tube they can provide the nutrients that time the cell stage of specification cell commitment is still capable of a being reverse the first mode of commitment is autonomous specification the set of transcription factor from the egg cytoplasm and these transcription factors regulate gene expression directing the cell into particular path of development in other words the egg cytoplasm is not homogeneous but rather contains different morphogenetic determinants morphogenetic determinants that is transcription factor or their mrnas the second stage of commitment is determination the determination that is a cell or tissue is said to be determined when it is capable of differentiating autonomously even when placed into another region of embryo that is the determination of different cell types or cell phase involves progressive restriction in their developmental potential when cell or tissue type is able to differentiate according to its specified fate even under these circumstances it is assumed that commitment is a irreversible process that means when a cell chooses a particular fate it is said to be determined although it still looks just like is under undetermined neighbor the determination is a stable change the fate of determined cell does not change that is the commitment is irreversible process the cell or tissue type is differentiate according to its specified fate they 
cannot change that is commitment is irreversible process the determination of different cell types or cell fates involves progressive restriction in their developmental potential the cell specification is intrinsic properties that is the internal characters of the cell seen in the early arabidopsis thaliana species this intrinsic properties means the plant hormones like auxin cytokinin ethylene etc and secondary metabolites like turpentine a phenolic group nitrogen containing compound they can influences plant growth what is secondary metabolite the secondary metabolite that is plant produce a large diverse array of organic compound that appears to have no direct function in growth and development this substance called as the secondary metabolite and function of the secondary metabolite it defends plant against the herbivores and pathogens these intrinsic factors they can involve in the uh, development of the plant or growth of the plant this is about the specification now in this lecture we can study what is the potency commitment and specification of the processes of the plant development okay in next lecture we can study about the induction determination and differentiation or competence these processes of plant development we can study in next lecture okay thank you